it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this gorgeous Suzette Stitch dishcloth. This is a super easy project and it makes a lovely stitch just using some very simple stitches like double crochets, chains, and single crochets. We're gonna learn how to make this dishcloth stitch by stitch. And also we have an optional hanging loop if you'd like to learn how to make that as well. It's, it's nice to hang up to dry or to display. And we're gonna be doing this, like I said, stitch by stitch. This is a very easy project. And the finished dimensions of our dishcloth are eight inches by eight inches. So eight inches wide, eight inches tall. And um, we're gonna learn about multiples too, in case you wanna change the size of it as well. Now, you can get the full video tutorial here today. We're gonna go through it stitch by stitch and step by step. You can also find the full written pattern on the Fiberflex blog. You can get the ad-free PDF on um, in my Etsy shop or in my Ravelry shop. And you can also join our Fiberflux Gold Pattern Club on Patreon for $5 a month and get the month's patterns each month um, delivered to you as a PDF as well on Patreon. So you can get this all different ways and we're gonna go through the video tutorial today together. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle or yarn needle. A tape measure uh, will be super helpful, although I'm gonna give you a tip later on in the video on how to just really quickly tell if your dishcloth is square, because we're gonna be making a square dishcloth. We're gonna be using a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. And then for our yarn, we're gonna use um, just some cotton dishcloth yarn. There's lots of different kinds out there. Everybody always seems like they kind of have their favorite dishcloth yarn. I'm gonna be using um, Pima Cotton by Lion Brand. This is one I really like. It's soft, um, it has lovely stitch definition. It comes in lots of colors. And um, each ball of this is 186 yards, 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, 170 meters. Um, it's 100% cotton. W you can easily get two dishcloths out of one ball of this. So each one of these dishcloths is about 90 yards. So um, with the 186 yard total, you'll have a, just a teeny tiny bit left over. So easily get two dishcloths out of one ball of this, okay? Now the recommended hook size is the 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook size. And this is a medium four on the yarn weight scale. If you look at the little ball of yarn with the number on it, look for that medium four. And um, if you need to substitute, look for something that recommends this eye hook and that medium four weight and you'll be just fine. Now, a lot of people ask me if you change yarn, change the hook size, just know like if you go up a hook size, your finished piece um, will be a little bit bigger. If you go down a hook size and use thinner yarn, your overall piece will be a little smaller. We're also gonna learn multiples and how to scale your piece as well if you need to make it narrower or larger, okay? So let's get started. We're going to begin by putting a slip knot on your hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Now our starting chain for the one I'm gonna show you is 30 chains. However, you can use any even number for your multiple, okay? So just when you're doing your starting chain, if you're not familiar with the concept of multiples, just know that any starting chain in an even number will be just fine for this, okay? So what we're gonna do, like I said before, is chain 30, although you can do any even number you like. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook, and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. So here is our starting chain, and this will give you kind of a rough estimate of, um, you know, the width of your piece, minus just a, a chain or two, okay? So we're going to start next by working our first row. We're going to do the first row, and then I'm going to show you how to do the second row, and then um, we'll just repeat that second row over and over and over again for the rest of your piece, okay? So what we're going to do is go in the second chain from the hook. This loop here on the hook right now does not count. So we're gonna go one, 
and two. And we're going to work in that second chain from the hook. So we're going to work a single crochet into that chain. So insert the hook into that chain and bring up a loop. You'll have two loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. That's the single crochet. Now in the same chain, what we're going to do is now work a double crochet. So to work a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that same chain and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook this time. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And that's the double crochet. All right. So we're just going to kind of do this all the way across. So skip the next chain and in the chain after that, do the same thing. Work your single crochet and your double crochet all in that same chain. Okay. Skip the next chain in the chain after that, do the same thing. Single crochet and then double crochet. Okay, next, skip the next chain in the chain after that, work a single crochet and then a double crochet all in that same chain. And we're just gonna keep repeating the sequence all the way across. Let's do a few more together. Skip the next chain in the chain after that, work a single crochet and then in the same chain, work a double crochet. Skip the next chain in the chain after that, work a single crochet and then work a double crochet. Just like that, okay? So, so keep doing this all the way across and then when we rejoin, we're gonna finish up the row and move on to row two. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of the row. There's just a few chains left. So what we wanna do is skip the next chain and the chain after that, we're just gonna do what we were doing before. So work a single crochet, in the same chain work a double crochet, and now there's just two chains left. So skip that next chain and then that last chain, we're just gonna work a single crochet to finish the row, okay? So here is row one and it'll give you a little bit of a picture of the width and kind of like what we have started here, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is move on to row two. So to move to row two, what we wanna do is chain one and then we're gonna turn our work, okay? Now, what we're going to do now, these single crochets and double crochets we did together, we're going to think of them as clusters now. And in the written pattern over at the blog, they're going to be called clusters, okay? But we have to sort of look at them to understand where to work the stitch into. So if we look at our strip that we just made and sort of uh, look at these clusters, we sort of like look at them as groupings. In the top of each one, there is a loop, a little hole or the stitch rather, okay? So if we look at, if we kind of like isolate one of these clusters that we made and turn it, you can see that there's a loop. You can see the next cluster, there's a loop. Loop, 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 or hole, whatever you would like to call it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into those, okay? And we're just gonna do the same thing we did in the previous row. So right in that stitch, work a single crochet, and then we'll work a double crochet, all in that same stitch at the top of this cluster, okay? So hop over to the next one, work a single crochet, and then a double crochet on that same stitch, okay? So right at every top of our cluster is a stitch, and it, it, if you tilt it towards yourself just slightly, you can really see them pretty well, okay? So we're just gonna do this all the way across. Go to the next cluster, work a single crochet, and then a double crochet all in that same stitch. Next cluster, single crochet, and a double crochet all in that same stitch, okay? So we're just gonna keep doing this all the way across, and then when we get towards the end of row two, we'll rejoin and then we'll um, learn how to keep going with the rest of the dishcloth. Okay, just coming up to the end of row two, I'm working just in these last couple of clusters. Remember our single crochet, and our double crochet all in the same stitch. And then here's the last one at the end of the row, single crochet and a double crochet. Now, at the end of the row, you'll see a little stitch here, just a little loop kind of off to the side. And you can sort of tell, um, it kind of rounds and see how it kind of goes in. And then here's our stitch we just did, okay? So right at the end here, we just wanna do a single crochet to finish the row. Okay. Okay. So row two is complete. So for the rest of your dishcloth, let's grab our other one that's finished. What you're going to do is just keep repeating 
let me just zoom out so you can see better. Just keep repeating row two over and over and over again until your dishcloth is the same width and height, okay? So we, we can see here kind of like, uh, we're, we're kind of at this point here. So we're gonna keep going until the dishcloth is as wide as it is tall. Now you can use your tape measure if you want to. Or a quick way, um, like I mentioned before, is you can take the corner of your square and fold it to this corner uh, diagonally across and just sort of like straighten it out here. And if there's uh, little to no overhang, it's about square. So you can also measure it, okay? So you can take your corner and just fold it upward. And if it sort of lines up, um, I mean, obviously not exactly, but see how it lines up nice into a nice triangle? That means it's, it's square, squarish, you know? So um, you can measure the width and the height as well. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna keep working row two over and over and over again. And when we come back, what we'll do is we'll finish up the row. And if you wanna add a little hanging loop to dry your dishcloth off, we're gonna add one of those next. Okay, just coming up to that very last stitch or two rather. And then we're going to just finish off the row with a single crochet, same thing we did before. And now our dishcloth is done. The width and the height are about the same. And so if you want to put an additional little hanging loop, it's super easy. So let me just show you how to do that real quick. Without cutting your yarn or fastening off, just work a chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then we're gonna go down to the base of our piece. And I like to turn it over just because it's a little bit easier to find where you wanna go. Right at the base of our chain, and I'll zoom way in so you can see, right at the base of our chain here is gonna be a loop or a little hole. And you're just gonna go down to the bottom here, insert the hook, and you're gonna work a slip stitch. So bring up a loop, and then work that loop through the loop that's already on your hook, bring it right through, and now you have a cute little hanging loop, okay? So then the last thing we wanna do is we wanna cut our yarn, and we're going to fasten off. And then you can kinda like straighten up your loop, get it nice and, you know, straightened out, open it up a little bit. Then you can kind of open up your loop, straighten it out a little bit. And the last thing we need to do is weave in our ends. So grab your yarn needle or tapestry needle, and we're just gonna thread it with a small tail. And you're gonna go into the loops here of your stitches and go in a ways, I don't know, about an inch or so. And then we're gonna go in one direction with our tail. Whoops, my loop's gonna go around that loop, so we're gonna fix that, but we're gonna go in one direction with our needle. And I need to just re-thread mine because I pulled it out. And then I like to come back in the other direction, especially with these items, like things that you wear or things that you use around the house, like a dishcloth, it's gonna be very hard working. So I just like to kind of like lock my tail into place and you can do that by just going in the opposite direction with your tail, okay? It'll kind of just hold it into place a little bit more than just one direction. And then just give it a little tug and a snip. And then we're gonna flip this around and we have one where we began too. Now, if you did multiple colors, you might have more ends. So any ends that are left over, obviously you wanna weave all those in. And if you have a variegated yarn that you used or you did stripes, if you're running to like, kind of like do some stash busting, um, then you may have lots of ends, but when you weave in these ends, just try to stay in the same color. Now this is a solid color, so I can go wherever, but if you have multiple colors on yours, try to keep your tails within that same color so that it doesn't show. It, it's much more hidden if you just kind of keep it in the same area. Okay, so I'm just coming in the opposite direction with my tail, and then I'm just gonna cut the yarn and fasten off. And now, our gorgeous dishcloths are complete. And I love how they make this cute little set. Um, we have two, and if we fold them uh, kind of like corner to corner, 
uh, the edges line up so we have a nice square shape. And that's it. That is how you crochet a Suzette stitch dishcloth. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.